Welcome to Hope Shot Recovery. I'm Sonia. I'm so glad that you can join me today. Today, I have my friend Jasmine on. You might know her as the Toothless Hope Dealer on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. She's all over the place. I'm so glad to have her on tonight. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, Jasmine. Hey, Sonia. <laughs> So she's going to tell her story tonight. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to get right into it. So tell me, where did your addiction begin? Where it began really young. I was prescribed pain, um, pain pills young. And then from there, it just, <laughs> it just got bad. Um, I lost insurance and um, wasn't able to afford a doctor or pain pills anymore after that. And from there, I had a friend introduce me to and it's a needle, heroin. And from there, from 17 to 19, it just, it got, <laughs> it got bad. Um, I was in and out of jail. Um, I was on probation because I got a DUI at 17. And I just wasn't doing good. <laughs> and um, eventually, I ended up, I had, um, I got a chance to go to rehab after I overdosed at 19. And um, I went to rehab and it was to the other side of Florida because I'm from Central Florida. I went to rehab in the Florida Panhandle and um, I ended up going for about 45 days. I had to go back to Brevard to basically handle, um, you know, probation and stuff. Got permission from the judge to move back. And when I did, probably one of the best things I ever did, but um, I moved here and I was doing really good for about three years. And then I had my son. <laughs> and when I had my son, I ended up having an emergency C-section and, you know, it's supposed to be like the best time of my life, you know, and it was, but something about when I got prescribed, um, Percocets, they ended up, you know, being gone within two days of prescription, not just because of me, because people who were living around me, um, that turned into me reaching out to the streets for pills and I ended up getting pressed fentanyl and they weren't really, um, you know, Percocet. Mm -hmm. So that led me back to addiction really fast, <laughs> faster than I thought it could even happen. And from there, postpartum, my little family fell apart, all that. Um, my son's dad ended up, you know, in jail. So I spent like the first 18 months of my son's life all on my own with no help no family no nothing I was doing sex work to support us um it was actually like doing sex work and you know a combination of doing that and getting that prescription and postpartum that just I hit I hit bad um I started using again I didn't want to feel um I thought I had my shit together <laughs> I definitely didn't um, I ended up meeting my fiance and we got together and we started using and dealing and my addiction got even worse. My door ended up getting kicked in. My son ended up getting taken. Um, luckily he got put with his dad because at this point his dad got out of jail, but, um, from there, like within a month out of jail from there, I end up with endocarditis. <laughs> um, end up in the hospital for eight months because I was hospitalized back to back. Um, it was four months the first time, and then they let me out. Within 10 days, I ended up back because they didn't treat the infection. They didn't even bother to make sure the infection was gone. So I had to stay another four months. And from there, within a month getting out, my fiance passes away. Um, while we while I was in the hospital, we had already made the decision to get clean. Like we were already going through enough. I was already looking at losing my son. I was already looking at going to prison for five years. It just wasn't fun anymore. You know how it is. Um, a month of him get a month of me getting out, he passes away. So from there, I just you know decided I needed to stay clean because that's what he would want. You know that's it's just what, what it was time to do. I mean. Yeah. I was so scared after getting infection. I didn't want to be using in the hospital and I get shame for using in the hospital all the time. I get crap for sharing about it and I don't share to glorify it. I share about how 
really messed up it was that I had to do that because they just couldn't bother to make me comfortable. And like, I just wanted to be made comfortable like any other person. I wanted to be treated like every other person. And Can I not- just stop you for a minute? I want to talk about that for a minute because one of the things that drew me to you is your story about going to the hospital because my husband went through that too. And I, I don't know if you had this experience and this is what I want to know. Like when we were in there, they would not give him a heart valve replacement if he needed one because he was an addict and they treated us like total shit. I wasn't allowed to go see him because I was an addict. And like, we didn't know if he was going to live or die and they treated him like shit the whole time. You know, did you have that same experience when you were in there? Pretty much. They let us see each other. Um, Not my fiance. Um, When he ended up on the ventilator, they wouldn't let me see him after that point, but they let him see me while I was there. And I don't know how or why, because one of the times I was in there, I ended up testing positive for ice and that shouldn't have happened, obviously. But um, they just kept a closer eye on us they moved me by the nurse's station they made us keep the door open but um they let us see each other but they knew like they hinted you know they'd make their smart comments um I had a nurse tell me that I don't know why we're wasting this expensive antibiotic on you I'm like what do you mean and she's like you're gonna be dead from an overdose in a few months anyway and I'm like oh like when you're that sick it's like you don't even have the energy to fight with these people and you don't want to fight with them because your life is in their hands so it's like do I even say anything or do I just take it, you know? Uh, Well, I just want to say that you are such a strong woman and I love that you share that stuff. And, and I'm grateful that you do that. Please don't ever stop doing that because there's a lot of people out there. Yes, we have the naysayers, right? But there's so many more people out there that can relate to that because look at all the stuff that you went through and then you made a decision to get clean after that and change your life. And that just shows like how strong you are inside, you know, but as an addict, like we don't know what else to do. You know, like we don't have other, we don't know there's another way of life available. So we just do what we know to do because that's all that we've ever done. Like you said, like you started using at, at a young age, even before 17, like you started using in your teenage years, like that was in, in bred into you your whole life. So it's no wonder and you didn't have any support around you. I mean, it's no wonder. So I just want to like highlight that because I don't think people understand, you know, I mean, we wind up in this spot and we just don't know how to get out of there. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So after you got out of the hospital, like what made you, I know that you said that you lost your fiance and I'm so sorry for your loss. And I, I really commend you for sharing about that because that was the video that you shared that really drew me to you. I was like, wow, you know, and, and it's so common these days that overdoses happen. So what happened in you that you said like, okay, I want to do something different. How did you know what to do? Well, with him, um, what was messed up the most about his death was it wasn't an overdose. Um, he ended up in that same hospital I was in and he was on O2, you know, oxygen and um, or one of those oxygen machines, like every time his O2 would drop, like in the forties or fifties, the alarm would go off and it was happening quite a bit. He had like heart arrhythmia going on and he was supposed to be checked on every time that alarm went off. Well, I left to go shower. I left to go get his food. I come back and he's being put on the ventilator some reason oh he wasn't God. that alarm. So um, that's why I have a lot of, you know, anger towards that hospital besides not just what they done to me, what they did to him. Um, I just felt like he was totally ignored because if he was checked on the way he needed to be checked on, because I was in the same situation he was. And if that happened to me, they'd have been running in there. So why didn't they do the same for him? Um, I kind of feel like he got it worse than I did because the whole time I was in there, he spoke up for me. So it kind Mm of, by the time he got in there, they were an asshole. I mean, they were worse. So That's so true. That's the reason I got kicked out of the hospital because they were mistreating my husband and I spoke up about it. And you don't want to do that in there because they will treat you like they kicked me out. I tried to go to the administrator. I tried to go to the charge nurse. I was trying to get everybody just to listen to me because of the way they were treating him, but nobody would listen. And they kicked me out as a result of it. Yeah, it's a shame. Having a day in their care after that. (laughs) Right. 
that's one thing it's like I wish I never brought him there but it's like can't do nothing about it now right but you know I mean when you look at it today like one thing I heard you say a minute ago is that you made the choice to get clean because you know that's what he would have wanted you to do oh yeah I could have very well and I say this all the time I could have very well used his death as another excuse to just keep spiraling I was using and dealing at the time I had no reason, you know, to stop. It's not like just because he was gone, I had to, you know, struggle to find it. I'd still had it coming in. So it was like, I can continue doing this. And yeah, maybe I might stay clean, but probably when not, you know, if you're around it all the time and you're an addict, it's like impossible. And I knew that. So I knew I was like, I had to make a decision, you know, um, I'm never going to get my son back if I don't stop and I'm going to end up dead. And what good is that? He's going to want me to have my son back and to be doing well. Um, so that's what I did, but it is really hard every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming yes. up on the anniversary of his death on February. So, mm. <laughs> but it's yeah. like, <sighs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I just, I thank you for sharing that. And, um, and I'm really proud of you for making the decision to turn your life around. So what did that look like for you when you got out of the hospital? And I mean, what did the beginning of your recovery look like? The first 14 months of my recovery was hell. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. I laid around, I cried. Um, I missed my son. I missed my fiance. Um, I felt so alone. Um, but I think I really had to go through that to get to where I'm at now. Um, I got my son back 14 months into recovery. And from there, my recovery just slipped, you know, everything got better. Um, from there, I got a house, I got a car, slowly things, everything I lost started coming back and it made all that hell worth it, you know? Um, so that's, that's a good thing, <laughs> but, um, there's parts, you know, where I still struggle, but for the most part, I think my recovery is pretty solid. <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. You know, um, especially, um, yeah, <laughs> that helps a lot too, because when she came to me seeing what addiction done to her. It just reminded me all over again what it did to me and my fiance because her and her boyfriend both reached out for help at the same time. Um, I don't know what or how her boyfriend's doing, honestly, because he's still at the other side of Florida. But my mom, she's been with me and she's doing great. I but love that. To watch her from what I was when I got out of the hospital back to kind of like it's kind of like watching, you know, what I went through. But to have a relationship with her now and both have the recovery thing in common that's pretty cool <laughs> because yeah. one thing we're the only addicts in the family <laughs> you know, well, nobody eats a cigarette but us <laughs> well I think it's really cool though that you and and I want to point this out like a lot of times people will say like what can I do for my family members I'm sure you've had people ask you those questions but what you did was you showed your mom by your example that recovery is possible a lot of people told me, don't take her in. Um, she's going to put your recovery at risk. You know, everything you worked for, you know, she wouldn't. And also a lot of people said, you know, she wouldn't have done the same for you if it was the other way around. It's like, I can't base it off that. Like if I am resentful my whole life, we're never going to have a relationship. I just turned all that pain into love and passion. And I'm glad I did because it was worth it. And it's paying off. Yeah. Okay, so I want to ask you a question. What got you started posting on social media? Oh man, um, I don't, <laughs> I don't really know. I kind of did it. I, it was more, I think, about my teeth in the beginning, about my denture journey, and then a lot of people started asking, you know, what led to me losing my teeth and my addiction causing my health issues is the major thing that happened. So I started talking about my addiction and then it kind of just me talking about both dentures and my addiction. And I realized it was helping me a lot because at that time, like I said, my first 14 months, I had nobody. Um, even though I got my son back, um, I was still really lonely and felt like I had no support. So I started finding support on there. So 
it was not only helping other people, it was helping me too. And it's just grown and it's been truly amazing to be able to help people after all that hell I went through, you know what I mean? It's like, I can take all that bad crap and turn it into good crap. You want, okay. One more question in closing. So if there is an addict out there that's sick in their addiction right now, maybe they're in the hospital with endocarditis. Maybe they've just went through like a terrible loss. What would you say to them? Really hard. I know it. like, I know in the beginning, like I said, it took me a long time to start feeling even a little bit okay. So it, we do a lot of crap in our addiction, you know what I mean? And it takes, it takes a while to start feeling normal again. You know what I mean? It takes a while to start feeling okay again. And it feels so impossible in the beginning. But if you just hang on, it will be worth it. For sure. Thank you so much for telling your story tonight. I am going to link all of her social media links in the description. So make sure that you go follow her after this. And we will see you again soon on Hope Shot Recovery.